If you watched the program yesterday, you heard me sit here and discuss the decaying American system, mostly by neglect from Joe Biden, how it seems like our government is falling apart, rewarding bad behavior in the bad guys and therefore hurting the good. But another reason our system is decaying is censorship. Censorship, silencing people. And all of the Americans, mostly on the left, that are completely okay with that. And that even see free speech, you know, the founding principle of America, as dangerous. They think allowing people like you to speak or me to be heard is dangerous. They're trying to protect you, they claim. They want to stop the spread of misinformation, they say which translates simply to shutting down any narrative, any comment, any point of view that they don't like. Like reporting, for example, on President's son Biden and his laptop, or how the president might be connected through him to a massive corruption scandal. You can't have that story floating around when the election's on its way back in 2020. The ruling class wouldn't allow it. You know what they also don't like? Anything that points out the hypocrisy of the Democrat Party or even former presidents, banning them on Twitter like they did for President Trump for apparently spreading misinformation about the 2020 election. That's the claim anyway. But who will they allow? How about the Ayatollah of Iran? And he can post about killing Jews, ending Israel forever. Somehow, that's okay. It doesn't violate those terms of service. Neither does the Taliban, apparently. They're still on Twitter. No issues whatsoever. They're good to go. But enter the world's wealthiest man, Tesla and SpaceX CEO Elon Musk, who announced this morning that he is attempting a hostile takeover of Twitter, all of it. He's trying to buy out 100% of the stock for over $41 billion. Now, this comes after Musk rejected a seat on Twitter's board after he bought in at 9% of the social media giant's stock. Now, he did that because the board seat would grant him no power. He'd basically be handcuffed. He'd be just one of a dozen votes on the board, and he wouldn't be able to buy any more than 14.9% ownership in the company. And he'd also be saddled with something called fiduciary responsibility, which means simply, if he did anything, sent out a tweet, made a comment, talked to somebody that was perceived to be not in the company's best interest, he could and most likely would be sued for billions of dollars and years of litigation. But now he's flipped that script. Here is the letter he sent to the board of Twitter. May I share? Chairman of the board, I invested in Twitter as I believe in its potential to be the platform for free speech around the globe. And I believe free speech is a societal imperative for a functioning democracy. However, since making my investment, I now realize the company will neither thrive nor serve the societal imperative in its current form. Twitter needs to be transformed as a private company. As a result, I am offering to buy 100% of Twitter for $54.20 per share in cash. A 54% premium over the day before I began investing in Twitter, and a 38% premium over the day before my investment was publicly announced. My offer is my best and final offer, and if it is not accepted, I would need to reconsider my position as a shareholder. Twitter has extraordinary potential. I will unlock it. Now, of course, all those people who said Twitter's a private company and can censor whomever and whatever it wants, well, suddenly, they're not too happy about any of this or that line of thinking. And I have to be honest, it's hilarious to see. After all, if Musk does buy Twitter, then those left-wingers can just go and make their own Twitter, right? Or maybe they could move to Canada or both. Wouldn't that be nice, huh? Now, one of those guys parroting that message and agreeing with President Trump being blocked from Twitter was a guy by the name of Max Boot. Max Boot is a Washington Post opinion columnist and former make-believe conservative. He told people he was, but he really wasn't. Here's what he tweeted. Here's Max Boot. I'm frightened by the impact on society and politics if Elon Musk acquires Twitter. 
He seems to believe that on social media, anything goes. For democracy to survive, we need more content moderation, not less. For democracy to survive, he writes, we need to curb free speech. We need to shut people down, people like Donald Trump or Elon Musk. That's what this man is saying. He thinks by defecating all over the First Amendment and the United States Constitution, he somehow is making his contribution and making democracy stronger, which by definition is fake news. And here's another. Florida Democrat Pam Keith writes this. Dear Elon, F off. Your ego is way bigger than your judgment, and your money doesn't make you a decent leader of a damn thing. You run a racist company, and I will never let my words drive your bottom line. I'll be doing all I can to convince liberals not to buy your sh. She then, of course, stomped her feet and stormed off. Keyboard warrior that she is. I mean, she seems nice. Mm -hmm. Now, you knew it was coming, right? The cries of racist, white supremacist, Donald Trump lover, Russian. They're happening because that's all they've got. The only thing the left knows to do is to point fingers and call names. And trust me, it won't be long before they do throw that Russia card on the table. Vladimir Putin, you're his puppet. Elon, you're, you're Vladimir's puppet. Russia. It's coming. Mark my words, take that one to the bank. Meanwhile, here's former Secretary of Labor and alt-left Berkeley professor, the midget himself, I mean, little person. My apologies. When I criticized Musk for worker violations at Tesla, he blocked me. When a college student started a Twitter account to track Musk's private plane, Musk tried to buy him off before blocking him. Does that sound like a free speech absolutist to you? Now, I don't know, Rob. If I'm a billionaire, I'm the richest guy in the world, and somebody's tracking my plane all over and telling people where it is, you know, maybe I don't think that's a good idea. Gee, crazy, right? But I also think this, blocking a personal account of some kid like that, that's a hell of a lot different than entire media apparatuses and entire cultures, which Twitter's part of, blocking people out, controlling narratives, pushing false narratives as well, and stopping people from viewing things they don't want them to see, blocking stories about things like Hunter Biden and his laptop and his crack addiction and the people that he's with, prostitutes, some of them underage, it appears. But I digress. All to protect a compromised candidate in a national election? Gee, Rob, I happen to think that's more dangerous, don't you? Hello? Anybody home? But hey, I'm just a hayseed who's actually read the Constitution for fun, actually, a few times. Have you read the Constitution, Rob? I've got a copy. I'll send it to you. And remember why free speech is so important. It's pretty simple. My mother taught me this. You see, as a country, we can freely debate ideas and then pick the best ones. My mom told me back in the 1970s when there were Nazis marching in Skokie, Illinois. I said, why do they let them do that? And the Supreme Court says, yes, they can do that. I said, why would they let them do that, Mom? She says, here's the deal. In America, we get to hear from everybody, even people like that that we don't like. And that's a great thing. I said, how is that a great thing? She said, it's simple. By hearing from everyone, we can decide what we like and what we don't like. If we don't get to hear from everyone, we can get fooled by people who pull one over on us. It's best to have everyone speak, because then we can pick the best ideas. God bless mom. Now, in today's society, we can't really do that anymore, because our ruling class won't allow it. And I think you can see just how badly that's worked for us so far, especially recently. And again, remember who these people were protecting, who they were forcing into power, who they were making sure they helped to get elected. Just watch this. You'll get my point. 
Their wages are going as far as they want them to. Then they get mad at the gas station. They're focusing a lot of that mm -hmm. on the White House. And you've talked about mm -hmm. pandemic. You've talked about supply chain and uh, Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they're still putting that anger with the administration. Mm -hmm. What do you say to them? Well, first of all, I acknowledge one must acknowledge um, that prices are going up and that people are working hard and in many cases are worried about whether they can get through the end of the month and make it all work. <laughs> I, I shouldn't laugh, but that is so embarrassing. Well, we have to acknowledge that prices are going up and, and people work hard and some are worried about making it to the end of the month. That was the question! She's the kid that shows up to class never prepared. Never! She has no answer at all for any of this. That is the Vice President of the United States. She is one feeble heartbeat or one missed airline step away from the presidency. And we have more idiocy coming from press secretary and MSNBC embedded reporter Jen Psaki. Listen to this. Does the White House still view inflation as transitory? That is the view of the uh, Federal Reserve and outside economists, and they all continue to project it will come down this year. Let's see. Inflation has gone up to record levels five consecutive months. Five consecutive months. And now we're at 8.5% year over year annualized 14.4% and if you add in food and energy 18% is our annualized inflation rate and look if this is still considered transitory then life is transitory because everything's transitory nothing's forever thank you Jen for that insight we have record inflation we have war in Europe we have an invasion at our southern border. Just about everything is worse than it was when Joe Biden took the oath of office, and you cannot argue with that. And it's all because our arrogant, sanctimonious elites, including Twitter, thought these people would do a better job running the country. And more importantly, Twitter and the elite thought they knew what was best for you because they think they're smarter than you and me. Mm hmm That's not the way our republic is supposed to run. Now we'll see if Elon Musk is successful in his bid to take over Twitter. I kind of hope he is. It'll be fun to see what happens. But even if he isn't, we've got to take steps to preserve free speech. Because despite what these leftists are saying, free speech is the key to our country and our freedom, just like my mother taught me. It's not the destruction of democracy. It is the foundation of democracy. That is free speech. And that is, my friends, the stone cold truth.